what's up everyone and welcome back to the Mayo Media Network. My name's Griffin Swanson and I'm here to break down the Thursday night football game between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cincinnati Bengals. Just barn burning games that we're getting here for Thursday night, but hey, that's okay. We're still going to play a little DFS and play some prize picks as well. And speaking of, got a couple of prize picks that I like here for this game and then we're going to dive into my spreadsheet breaking down the DraftKings showdown. But before we do that, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel. The Mayo Media Network has football content coming out Monday through Sunday all season long. We got showdowns, main slates, DraftKings tiers, as well as season long content. You don't want to miss out on any of that. For you podcast people, you can head on over to the Apple Pods or Spotify, find all the content there. Leave a five-star review while you're at it. But with that being said, let's go ahead and kick things off here with a couple of prize picks that I like here for this Thursday night game. All right, so over on the prizepicks.com website here now, if you haven't signed up for prize picks yet and you want to do so, make sure you use code MMN upon sign up for up to a $100 match deposit. You don't have to put 100 bucks in. You want to put in 50, they'll match 50. You want to put in 20, they'll match 20. It's up to you how much you want to put in in that initial deposit. But again, if you're using code MMN, you're going to get up to a $100 match deposit. It's house money. It's free money. As soon as you put your deposit in, prize picks matches that it's not like some of these other dfs sites where you have to earn it back as a bonus nope it's up front again just use code mmn upon sign up now i like a couple of picks here myself for this thursday night barn burner the first one is going to be joe mixon there over 83 and a half rushing yards and look i know this is a bigger number but mixon's been able to hit the over on that number in two or three games so far this year he has the second most rushing yards across the nfl and the second most rushing attempts as well just behind Derrick Henry in both of those categories. So he's running the ball very well, and the volume is there too. Again, I know it's a bigger number, but I'm looking at two different projection sites here. One has him at 86 and a half yards, and the other one at 93, close to 94. And if we look back at what Joe Mixon did last year against this Jags defense, he had 25 rushing attempts and 151 rushing yards in that game. Also had two rushing touchdowns. I almost took the rushing TD prop here over just one rushing touchdown for Mixon. So if you kind of want to do that as a bonus, I think that's in play as well. I kind of went back and forth between the rushing prop and the touchdown prop, but I figured, hey, Mixon's running the ball really well right now. I know the volume's going to be there too. So the rushing prop got the slight edge over the touchdown prop. And then the other prize pick that I like in this matchup here is going to be a receiving yards prop. I'm going to take the over here on Tyler Boyd at 56 and a half receiving yards. This Jags defense just isn't very good. And it sounds like T. Higgins is likely going to be out in this game. He didn't practice on Monday or Tuesday. Something we'll want to monitor closer to kickoff, uh, but I don't foresee him playing on a short week. So give me even more Tyler Boyd here. I'll talk about this in the spreadsheet, but he's got the seventh best matchup on the entire week. Pro Football Focus ranks him as number seven in a wide receiver cornerback matchup, and that's just not this game or just the Sunday, Thursday slate. That's the entire week. So needless to say, he's got a great matchup here, and he leads the team with 7.6 targets per game. I think he hits the over here at 56 and a half receiving yards. So to recap here, I'm going to take the over on both Mixon and Boyd this week. I do think this Bengals offense is going to have their way with that Jags defense and think these guys hit the over on both of their props. Again, we can approach this two different ways, the flex play or the power play. If you go the power play route, you will need all of your picks to hit, but it does increase the payout. So those are the two picks that I like here for Thursday night. Again, if you want to sign up for prize picks, just make sure you use code MMN upon sign up for up to a $100 match deposit. But all right, folks, time to dive into this spreadsheet here, breaking down that DraftKings showdown slate. So diving into this spreadsheet here, first and foremost, I'm always listing out those Vegas odds here in the top left-hand corner. You can see the Bengals are sitting pretty nice at home with a minus 335 money line and a minus 7.5 point spread right now with an over-under coming in at 46.5 points. And then I got these showdown stats here as well. Going to hop on over to this other sheet though to give you a better look at this. You want to take a screenshot of this, do whatever you want, but I'll run through these pretty quickly here. Six different showdown stats from 
2020 regarding the top 1% lineup. So the best showdown lineups from last year. So number one here, 92% of all showdown lineups rostered at least one quarterback. Of the top 1% of those lineups, 96% did as well. Number two, 33% of all lineups rostered a wide receiver at captain. Of the top 1%, 31.4% did there as well. Number three, 57% of the top 1% of lineups rostered a captain from the team favored to win. So in this example here for this Thursday night game, the Cincinnati Bengals. Number four, run it back. An opposing quarterback, wide receiver, or tight end was included in 88.9% .9 of winning lineups that rostered a quarterback, wide receiver or tight end from the other team at captain. Number five, ignore defense and kickers in the captain spot. Very rarely does that work. Of the top 1% of lineups, that only worked 1.1% of the time, so very rarely, uh, like I said. And number six, don't play more than two kickers or defenses in the same lineup, and usually one is fine. So those are the six stats. Like I said, take a screenshot of those, do whatever you want with them, uh, but I felt they were important to kind of go over before diving into my favorite plays here. So with that being said here, let's dive into it, kicking it off with the captains. Now, for those of you who are new to this video here, or at least new to the spreadsheet, what I do is I always list out a captain from both sides of this game. It's probably optimal to go with a Cincinnati player, but if you're looking to get a little more contrarian, you could go with someone on the Jag side of things. So first guy I got here then is Joe Mixon. He's a true bell cow this year in this offense. We've been hearing it for years, and we've finally seen it here throughout the first three weeks of the season playing about 79, 80% of the snaps, averaging about 24.66 opportunities per game, so rushing attempts and targets. Now, I talked about this in the prize picks, but only Derrick Henry has more rushing attempts and rushing yards throughout the first three weeks of the NFL season. Now, I know that's a small sample size, right? But needless to say, this guy's touching the ball a lot, and he's making the most of that opportunity in this offense. And again, I just don't think this Jags defense is very good. So you could go out with one of those pass catchers like Jamar Chase or even Tyler Boyd in the captain spot, but it's going to be Joe Mixon for me based off of the opportunity he's had this year and what he's been able to do with that opportunity. Now, if I am going to roll out a Jags player in the captain spot. It's going to be Marvin Jones for me. Been the number one pass catcher in this offense and the most consistent to say the least. You can see there he leads the team with 18.9% of the target share and averaging 16.1 DraftKings points per game. And what really stuck out to me here is he ranks third across the NFL in in air yards. Now, that's because Trevor Lawrence is throwing the ball a lot, trying to play catch up, but needless to say, this guy is getting tremendous opportunity as well, and those air yards really stuck out to me. Now, they maybe haven't translated into a 100 yard receiving game quite yet, uh, but he's certainly bound to have one of those sooner than later, assuming those air yards keep up. And again, the targets are there, and he's been able to turn those into two touchdowns this season as well. So, again, it's probably not optimal to go with the Jags play player in the captain spot, but if you are looking to get a little contrarian, Marvin Jones is the guy for me. Now moving on down here to the flex plays, got both quarterbacks listed at the top. You know, I go back to this first stat, right? Of the top 1% of lineups from last year, 96% of them had at least one quarterback in their lineup. So I usually just jam one quarterback in most of my showdown lineups. First one there, Joe Burrow. The one cause for concern with him is his passing attempts have decreased dramatically from last season, and rightfully so. He was throwing the ball like 40 plus times a game last year and you don't need to be doing that with your rookie quarterback or now your sophomore quarterback and they're kind of trying to run that balanced offense with Joe Mixon part of the reason I like him as a captain but Joe Burrow is also thrown for multiple touchdowns in all three games this year and that is really encouraging you can also stack him up with a number of guys Jamar Chase Tyler Boyd or even Joe Mixon who gets involved in the passing game so like I said I'll probably jam one of these guys in each of my showdown lineups uh, but Joe Burrow here the really the only cause for concern is the lack of pass attempts that he's had through three games now there is a lot more to be concerned about here for Trevor Lawrence he's only got five touchdown passes through three games, seven interceptions, and fumbled the ball twice last week. He's got nine turnovers here, averaging three per game. The one encouraging thing I did see last week was he had six rushing attempts for 27 yards. You know, maybe he gets a little bit too much pressure on him in this game. He needs to use his legs once again. Definitely a guy who can score a rushing touchdown. He's a, he's a pretty fast kid, actually. And it's also encouraging that he has the second most air yards of any quarterback in the NFL. I go back to Marvin Jones when I was talking about it there, right? That's because these guys are playing from behind 
basically the entire game or have been throughout these first three games and I kind of foresee the same thing here against the Bengals so Lawrence has struggled but assuming he can use his legs a little bit more and he continues to have those air yards then I don't mind him here at 10.4 I probably prefer Burrow just because I like his pass catchers a little bit more but again I go back to that first stat there of the top 1% of lineups 96% had a quarterback so getting either one of those guys in your lineup is probably essential and then we got Jamar Chase there. Who said this guy can't catch the ball? Catching problems, not here. This guy's got four touchdowns throughout the first three games. Looks to be the number one target in this offense. You know, I know T. Higgins is out, and you can make a case that he's the number one wide receiver, uh, but Jamar Chase has played really well and looked like a first-round draft pick that they took fifth overall. So all the rumors we heard this preseason, you can wash those away. This guy has 13.4, 22.4, and 23.9 DraftKings points throughout the first three games. Give him a boost, especially if Higgins is out too. You can stack him up with Joe Burrow, and you can even put him in the captain spot if you wanted to as well. The next guy we got there then is James Robinson at 9.4K. Really good to see him get a normal running back one workload last week. 15 rushing attempts, six targets, caught all six of those targets as well. Finished with 25.4 DraftKings points, scored a touchdown in that game. By one cause for concern here with Robinson is his head coach is a donkey. Urban Meyer, I have no idea what he's doing with this offense right now. He should probably just go back to college. I'm not going to get into that rant here right now, uh, but I guess that would be the cause for concern for me is Urban Meyer kind of switches things up, goes back to Carlos Hyde here on Thursday night, but he really shouldn't because James Robinson played really well last week. They should build off of that, and hopefully the confidence is back for Robinson as well. We all saw what he did last year during his rookie campaign. It's a pretty solid running back in the NFL. So again, the one cause for concern is Urban Meyer. It's certainly not James Robinson. It's a pretty talented running back that I'm okay with at 9.4K. We then got Tyler Boyd there, one of the prize picks that I talked about here for today. And I think he can be a captain play as well, especially if T. Higgins does not play. It's a guy who's tied for the team with 7.6 targets per game. He's tied with T. Higgins, actually. Uh, but 7.6 targets per game. Jamar Chase, to me, is still the number one wide receiver in this offense, but I like the opportunity that Tyler Boyd is seeing out of the slot. And again, I mentioned this in the prize picks, but Pro Football Focus is giving Tyler Boyd the seventh best wide receiver cornerback matchup, not just for Thursday, not for Sunday, Thursday, the entire week four set of games, Tyler Boyd, the seventh best matchup. So that's really encouraging. And he actually, I believe, had 90 receiving yards and a touchdown last year against this Jags defense. And like I said, they're just not very good. They traded away C.J. Henderson earlier this week, one of their starting cornerbacks for Dan Arnold. I almost put Dan Arnold here in this spreadsheet, but again, I, I don't know if Urban Meyer's even going to use him in this game here, uh, but he's a low-priced option if you want to take a look at that. Uh, but Tyler Boyd comes down to the opportunity, again, tied for first on the team with 7.6 targets per game, and it comes down to that matchup, the seventh best on the week. Sign me up for that at 7.4K. Now, since I'm throwing out stats from last year here, I wanted to go back and confirm this. So last year, week four, he had eight targets in that game, seven receptions, 90 receiving yards, so I did get that right, uh, but he did not score a touchdown. He actually had a rushing attempt in that game for four yards. Uh, he only had four, five total rushing attempts last year, so maybe we see him do that, but just wanted to clarify, Tyler Boyd did not score a touchdown last year. Certainly think he could this week, uh, but want to get my numbers right. So, seven for eight, 90 receiving yards. Not a bad game. You know, that's still 16 DraftKings points, and he's only 10 yards away from getting that three-point bonus. I certainly think he could do that here this week against those Jags. Next guy we got there then is DJ Shark. Uh, captain play, if you want to go that route for the Jags, ranks sixth in air yards across the NFL. Again, Trevor Lawrence ranks second from a quarterback perspective. It makes sense that his top two wide receivers are right there as well. But the A dot kind of stuck out to me. So that's average depth of target, 16.31 yards per target. They haven't really connected throughout the first three weeks here. You know, back to week one, DJ Shark had 12 targets in that game, but he only had three receptions. It's not going to be long here before he starts to connect with Trevor Lawrence, so that's really encouraging for me. He also is second on the team with an 18% target share, so the numbers are there. He's got two touchdowns in three games, too. He just really hasn't connected 
on a consistent basis with Trevor Lawrence. And like I said, that should come sooner than later, so I don't mark mind Shark here at 7.2K. Next, we got the Bengals defense here. I talked about the woes and struggles that Trevor Lawrence has had throughout his first three games of his rookie season. Seven interceptions, two fumbles, averaging three turnovers per game. And the Bengals are averaging at least one turnover per game and three sacks per game as well. It's been very encouraging. They're a little more expensive here at $5,600, but have been able to rack up five, six, and 12 DraftKings points last week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're starting to find their mojo a little bit here, and I think they can continue that here this week against Trevor Lawrence. And I think eventually Lawrence is going to figure it out, but again, as long as Urban Meyer is back there, I, I really don't know. Um, playing at home is always a boost for defenses as well. Sitting there at minus 335 on the money line, certainly don't mind them here at this price tag. And then the Bengals kicker here, Evan McPherson's been pretty consistent through three weeks as well, albeit he's only had four field goal attempts. He is four for four, and he's hit two of those beyond 50 yards, so that was really encouraging. You know, the Bengals implied to score 26.75 points in this game. Certainly think it could be one of those games where McPherson has two or three field goals and racks up solid DraftKings points. You can see there in the three games this year, he's hit seven, seven, and 11. So I'm not going to go there for sure, but if I only have less than $4,000 and nobody's really sticking out to me and I think you know it could be one of those games where maybe the Bengals drive down and they don't quite punch in a bunch of touchdowns but this guy has three four field goal attempts I certainly don't mind him here at this price tag a $3,800 and then if you're looking for a really low priced option it's Auden Tate for me now this is if and only if, I had a little math term there uh, for you math nerds out there. I remember that from calculus in high school. Um, but yes, if and only if T. Higgins is out this week, I like Auden Tate. He should be the number three wide receiver in this game. Played 27 to 47 snaps last week with T. Higgins out, acting as a wide receiver number three, but he only saw one target. That's pretty funny because throughout the DFS community, people just rave about Auden Tate. He's the preseason player of the year, super talented, da 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 ultimately the number four wide receiver when T. Higgins is healthy, but if you want to pay for $400 or don't have a bunch of money left over, I don't mind them at that low of a price tag to say the least. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap up the video here for today. As always, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. Don't forget to like this video here. Subscribe to the Mayo Media Network. Like I said earlier, they got football content coming out Monday through Sunday all season long, amongst much other content tackling multiple different sports. And they got everything that you're looking for. Now, for those of you who want to sign up for prize picks as well, don't forget to use code MMN upon sign up for up to a $100 match deposit. Like I said, we got a barn burner here. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals, Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, those are the types of games we're going to get on Thursday night, but we're always going to play a little DFS and prize picks, right? Let's have some fun with it. Let's win some money as well. I'm out of here.